call to order this meeting of the Greenfield Community Preservation Committee at 5.34 p.m. on December 15th, 2022. Um, this meeting is being recorded by the committee. Um, and if anyone else is recording this meeting, you are required to let me know um, before you begin recording. Okay, so um, first on the agenda is roll call. Um, I think in a virtual meeting, I think you are always supposed to do like a full roll call. So um, I'll just go ahead and do that. Um, Garth. Here. Okay, John. John is not here. Uh, Tom. Tom is not here. Susan. Here. Susan's here. Giannis is not here. Dave. Here. Dave's here. Donna. Here. And Wistie. Here. And Travis, I am also here. <laughs> okay. So we do have a quorum, as I said. Um, the next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Um, I move to approve the minutes from uh, the meeting on, um, oh gosh, what was the date? Yeah, that's November? what I was doing, I find. <laughs> uh, it was December November. 1st. December 1st, right. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? A second. Okay, a motion to approve. So, uh, by Donna was seconded by Dave. Any other discussion on that? Okay. Um, again, I know from Conservation Commission that when you're in a fully remote meeting, we're supposed to always do a roll call vote on things. So, um, so we'll vote on approving the minutes. Susan? Yes. Donna? Yes. Wistie? Yes. Garth? Yes. Dave? Yes. Right, and I'm also a yes, so the motion passes and the minutes are approved. Okay, so um, next on the agenda, next agenda item is application review. Um, and we have four applications, all from the Recreation Department this time. Um, my thinking was that we should probably, since so many of these are recreation projects, that uh, Christy will probably want to be here for. We should try to pack those into as few meetings as possible. So she doesn't have to be at every single meeting. So that's why this one's all, all for recreation projects. Um, so sure. hopefully make it a little easier on Christy. Um, just one, one thing in our minutes, we did mention we would try to put public comment at the beginning of the future meetings. I don't know if that made it to the agenda or if we're going to do that yeah just, just at the hearing or where we want to so we do have public comment um later in the meeting and okay. i i was messaging with um uh, you know i was christian and i were talking about where to put the public comment and i thought it made more sense to have it at the end that way people could comment on what we had talked about in this meeting already instead of mm -hmm. having it twice you know like once for last meeting and then mm -hmm. for this meeting um so we, we, do have, we do have that later, later in the meeting. Great. Okay, so um, in our last meeting, when we started reviewing these projects, um, you know, we had people kind of like introduce the projects again or whatever. And I think we all agreed that that um, didn't seem to be all that useful and that we wanted to just like jump right into asking questions. So I think, you know, Going forward, this meeting and all future meetings uh, for the application review, I think we're just going to jump right into any questions that we have. Um, and then, you know, if there's more that the applicant wants to add, they can add that in while we're asking questions, I guess. Um, so the first project um, that we we're going to talk about tonight is the Recreation Department's application for the ADA track um, at the high school. And I don't know if anyone wanted to, um, if anyone had any questions they wanted to start off with or that they had off the top of their head. Uh, yeah, Donna. 
Uh, well, I'd just like to clarify that it's um, it's not an actual track, it's an access to the track area. Yeah. Um, so it's a fairly short um, piece. And, um, and I guess I would just ask the question that I brought up last time that was not on the, um, on the application, which was, uh, if this doesn't get funded or if it gets partially funded, do you have a plan to potentially complete it anyway? Is it okay if I just jump in, Travis? Yep. So yeah, uh, Christy, I guess if you just want to introduce yourself and then um, if Jenny, if you want to answer at any point, just introduce yourself and then go ahead. Sure. So I'm Christy Moore, the recreation director. I did submit this um, in conjunction with Ginny. Um, she started the pre-app and then I kind of took it over from for her um, based on her busy schedule. So um, that's a good question, Donna. And my answer is that it has um, always been discussed, but we have never come up with funding for it. So unless the school or the city um, is able to allocate money someplace else, if we don't get full funding, um, I think it will still wait until we have the full amount to move forward. Um, Ginny, I'm not sure um, with the ADA Access Board, if there is a budget for projects like this, you would be able to answer that better than I, but I don't think you have full funding to do something like this, correct? Um, you're muted. Sorry. Jenny, you're, you're muted right now, but before, before you get to that, I actually forgot um, there was something I, I was supposed to do before we got to this point. Um, oh. Christian is not in this meeting and is not going to be able to take notes on this meeting, so we need someone. I've been taking notes. Okay. Um, and also, just so you know, it sounded like going forward, um, it sounds like we should revert to having someone on the committee doing the notes instead of Christian, which is how we started back in the day. So um, if right. you want to do it for today and then maybe next meeting, we can talk about who's going to do it permanently. That would, yeah, that would be good. That's fine. That's okay. Fine. All right. Thank you. All right, Thanks. Jenny, go ahead, Jenny. Sorry to interrupt. So um, we didn't discuss fu um, the funding of this through, dis through disability access, although we do have a small fund there. So that's a very good question. Um, we get, we get, um, the parking revenues from tickets and we have I think like three thousand dollars in that but it, that has not come up before as a question I if this came up before us on city council and there was a financial order I, I would have voted for it but I, I don't there I, I think there are other possibilities of sources of funding truthfully but it's a it's a small ask I'm just hoping you might be in favor of it um yeah Garth, go ahead um so yeah we we had a um, brief meeting with Stuart yesterday to sort of like go through all these and his his kind of take take on them uh, sorry just to interrupt Stuart is from the community Pre community preservation coalition mm -hmm. yes yeah sorry um sort of t talking about all these things and the um, the, the main thing he brought up with a number of these is uh, like um, the question A is, is who, who can actually controls that? Is that school property or is that actual like public recreation property? Um, because if it's a school property, it really should come from school or something else. Um, and uh, so that's that's sort of one question, and then my comment is: when I originally saw this one, my my initial thing was like, "Yes, this is awesome. We should do this. This will be great to fill this in um, and get it done." And then the more I've been thinking about it, um, honestly, the angrier <laughs> I've become about it. It's like, really, it's twelve hundred dollars. And in seven years, the town hasn't come up with that or hasn't like directed the DPW to dump a little cement on there and fix this like very basic thing versus like we have to go to bid for a, a thousand dollar project to get it funded by CPA. Um, so I mean that 
I guess that, that'll be like our, our further discussion. But the, the, the question is, I guess really, who, who controls that, that land? Um, and that really determines what we can do under the CPA recreation um, bucket, basically. So my response to that, Garth, is the same as it was during the pre-app in that it is city land. Um, the school land is city land and that yeah. the recreation and DPW department um, are the ones that maintain the, the sporting areas. As you can see with letters of support, the superintendent, the PE directors and the athletic director are all in support of this. I think this was a huge mm -hmm. oversight with the school high school building project. Um, sadly, I was not on any of those review boards. Otherwise, I would have caught it and several other things, honestly. Um, mm -hmm. It is a small amount of money, but it's also, you guys have to remember that the DPW budget continues to be cut. It doesn't increase. And this is an opportunity to um, be able to complete a small project with CPA funding. I think yeah. I answered all your questions. I, so I have one follow-up question, which is, um, I know in the application it says thir thirteen fifty for construction. Um, is that thirteen fifty in supplies, or how how is that money? So in your budget, um, it talks. Where is it? Um, construction is going to be all the forms, um, the rebar, all that kind of stuff that would be needed to. Um, secure the cement slab. And it's also um, a pathway for a viewing platform, they call it, if somebody's in a wheelchair or um, a walker and has brings their own chair or whatnot so that they can um, sit next to the bleachers and observe the track meet as well. Okay, so it's not paying for any um, like city employee salaries to work on it. No, my honest hope with this is because it is a small amount that um, perhaps DPW would be able to cover the labor, but that is not, um, you know, I don't have a definite answer. It all depends. Like I know DPW is down um, double digit employees right now, so. Okay. Um, yeah, and so uh, <clears throat> to, to go back to what Garth was saying, Garth, Christian and I had a meeting with, um, with Stuart and basically went through every single application. Um, and you know he was pointing out things that that we should you know think about or discuss and um one of the things for like garth was saying for multiple recreation projects was that cpa funds um for recreation he said what did he say he said the it follows the land so if it's a recreation project it should be for um a project that's on land that's permanently protected for recreation so he was saying it you know it should be land that's like managed by the parks department um and because like city or like any other city property including like a school property you know basically we need to make sure that that uh our investment will um you know continue to be recreation and like on a school property technically they could you know come in next year and bulldoze the whole track and say we want to add on to the school and build you know it's not protected for recreation it's it's school property so they could do anything they want school related there um so he was he was a little hesitant i think you know he was saying that schools are kind of a gray area and money has been used for projects on school property but in a previous meeting he's also told me money's been used for a lot of things that don't technically qualify for cpa funds and then it's just up to whether you know somebody pushes back on it or not so like garth when i saw this project i was like oh yeah that seems like a pretty easy uh you know like relatively small amount and like ADA access should be a priority, but it does seem a little complicated by the fact that it's not protected recreation land, I think. 
and may not technically qualify. That's not really a question, but I'm just uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a warning. And I think we're going to run into that on some of the Beacon projects as well. Yeah. So Jenny, you go ahead. May I just say one thing in, in favor of it? It's up to you to all you good people to decide and, and you have to follow mm -hmm. the, the the guidelines that that you have. Um, mm -hmm. that I don't know every one of them. Um, I just wanted to say a couple of things. For any of you who, who walk, that surface is fabulous. And when you walk on it, you feel 20 years younger than you are. <laughs> and um, for um, just, I'm not speaking for the whole disability, you know, our commission, but we say all the time that, you know, for access, it's all about the details and somebody, you know, somebody missed this, but if you have a cane or a wheelchair or a walker and you, and maybe you're just getting over a hip, uh, hip surgery, this is one of the safest places in the city to walk. I actually walk on that track and, and feel much younger when I do it. And in the winter time, that's where I'd go because it, it, it melts fast and it's flat. So I understand that you have to follow those rules. I just wanted to put a pitch in for, so that, you know, we've been hoping that this would happen for quite a while, that, um, that it's, it's roughly a hundred feet. And, to answer Travis's question, I know this from voting on capital projects. It's about $100 a foot for, um, you know, sidewalks. That's what Milo always gives us. And that that number really makes perfect sense. But um, it's just that people now with mobility issues are precluded from either walking around that or maybe if they had a family member or a friend that was participating in something. Um, it the it's hard to get from the, the the sidewalk, the nice paved sidewalk over to the viewing pad or the track. And I'll be silent now because I don't want to take up too much of your time. But thank you all. Yeah, Susan. Yeah, Jenny, I just have a question. Um, would it be possible for the ADA committee to um, to come take this up at um, at your meeting and see even if there's a match question um, on on building that and let us know if there is any interest in doing that from the from the committee because that that could make a difference. Yes, I, I can do that. I can do that. Um, another thing I'll add for the rest of the committee is that um, Christian sent me the link to the um, uh, basically like scoring matrix that he put together um, with all of our scores from scoring different projects. So if we want to review those, we can. Um, I don't have, we haven't received scores from everyone on the committee um, and I was doing them based on what the next meeting was gonna be. So some people have already done all of them. So it's, it's kind of apples and oranges comparing all the projects right now. So I don't know if maybe we wanna wait to look at those, um, but we do have those numbers. I think we should wait until everybody weighs in. Okay. I thought that made sense too, but just wanted to throw that out there. Um, does anyone have any other questions or comments about this project before we get to the rest of the recreation projects for tonight? Uh, oh, which uh, is that uh, one? You know, um, it is a small amount of money, but it's also an amount of money that could be so easily put aside by every other group. And one of the things that I'm concerned about is um, what Ginny addressed and how many people can use this and that, you know, um, it's, it's just a big issue that is easily put aside in favor of other things. And, and I want to speak in favor of considering that. Mm -hmm. I think the final thing I'll say with this, Travis, if I may, is that, mm -hmm. um, you know, 
uh, I've mentioned this for years, but this is the only funding opportunity that has come up that's available. So I encourage Ginny to apply because to me, it's a simple thing to finish and have a checkbox that we have completed something on our ADA transition plan that we are um, um, cited for because it's not accessible. It will solve a, a big oversight um, on the school building committee side. And um, I just think it's the right thing to do for those that have disability um, mobility issues. But you guys get to make the decision. And city council after us. <laughs> All right, um, if no one has any other questions or comments on that one, we can move right along. Um, the next one on the agenda is the Beacon Park. Um, let me, uh, improvements. Beacon Park improvements, Bonchi courts, water fountains, um, ADA pathways. I think that's a summary of the, <laughs> of the project. <laughs> Did anyone have any questions to start out with on this one? Go ahead, Gar. Oh, sure. yeah, go ahead. So if, there's, if there's others. Um, so uh, this was another one that we got a lot of warnings about um, because it sounds like the bocce courts are going on the town owned lot that is not actually part of the park of yet. Um, it's currently just a town owned lot. So we conceivably could build a build a thing and then the town decides they want to put affordable housing there or they want to park the dbw trucks or whatever else um so you know again it's it's one of those like who's who's per, whose purview is it is it actually under um the, i believe the water water fountain sounds like it goes over by the 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 that's like the tennis courts and the and the play playground in there um so that that would probably fall fall under, um, and then the the other question was around the. Um, so there was a there was a capital, I guess what was put in for the fifty thousand capital, or was the full one hundred and thirty capital put in, and then city council decided to just give you fifty thousand for like one you know, one, one fountain, one court, um, right, because it, 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 it sounds like it's a, there's sort of a, a fuzziness in like, you know, however much money we'll, we'll build, we'll build two bocce courts or we'll put in, we'll put in two, you know, if we get, get enough money, we'll put in two water fountains. Um, so just, I guess the, the, those were the two two main issues that came up around that one. So um, to to answer that, so the Beacon side um, of Beacon Field, um, I'm not sure if that is deeded Parks and Rec, but that is an easy thing that can go through City Council and make a motion and and add to the deed that it is um, Parks and Rec land. That's what we do with other park grants. So I'm pretty sure that's something that can easily be done. There would be some sort of legal fee, I'm sure, with that. Um, but I think that is an easy solution to that, Garth. Um, and then as far as the the capital request that was approved before, we had requested 90,000. Um, it was cut to the 50 and um, with the hopes of coming back the following year for the rest and with inflation and whatnot, that's why the cost has gone up. Um, so we haven't done anything. The two fountains were ready to purchase, um, but we just haven't moved forward because it just makes sense to have it all together. And then I could bid it all together and build it. Um, there seems to be a lot of question about the bocce courts themselves. I'm not sure where all these um, questions come from, but if people have questions about the bocce court, they know they can contact me directly. The bocce courts that we will build will have um, uh, ADA sidewalk and parking um, around them so that anybody again with um, mobility issues um, can play. Uh, the Special Olympics actually does a lot with um, bocce. So I think it's a, a cool activity that we could bring um, the Special Olympics up here um, to do as well. Um, so I think that answers your two questions, Garth. Cool. 
And I think um, just to add on to that, the thing about the land not being, um, seems like it's not deeded to the parks department right now. I think the two ways that would have to work is either before we vote on it, that would have to happen and get transferred to parks, or we would have to vote on it conditional upon that happening. And then if not, then the money wouldn't go to the parks department unless that happened. I, think I would have to two find, we... oops, sorry, Travis. Go ahead. Um, I was just gonna say, I'd have to find the deed. Like, um, that's a great question. Like, I haven't looked at the deed myself, so I'd have to look at it. I don't know if we can just do it with attorneys or if it has to go through um, with CBC. I don't know if there's any requirements like there is with park grants and LWCF funding to label land a certain way at all. I'm not certain on that. <clears throat> it sounded like from talking to Stuart that um, if if it was under the control of the parks department in any city or town then that qualified it as um like it doesn't have to have like a uh, any extra um um deed restriction yeah any like okay. extra restriction like that um so that that was my understanding yeah so obviously the parks department maintains that um area we mow yeah. it, you know, we've put the ice rink on it before. Um, we moved the ice rink because um, our, our thought was that it was off the field and wouldn't hurt the soccer field, but it gets too much shade um, mm -hmm. and the leaves were falling in it. So um, it was more of a maintenance hassle over there. So we had to move yeah. it back to the big field. Yeah. Yeah. It's just another one of those technicalities where, you know, we're we're doing this all for the first time this year, right. and I think we're right. we're like figuring out what all these little technicalities are um, as we go. Dave, I know you had a question. I've got several of, of details that we may not want to get in into. Uh, first of all, I was uh, I I I don't get around an awful lot, but I have not heard that there's a big demand for bocce in town, and I just wondered if you would uh, kind of talk about that a little bit. Uh, Christy, and then my, I have another question, and that is, uh, what is the surface of these courts, uh, and for how long during the course of a year are they playable? Um, so as far as demand, it's been really a group of uh, seniors, the aging population, and we don't have any real specific um, athletic fields or area that's uh, specifically for seniors. It would have been nice if there was some forethought and we built something like this over at the senior center, um, but there's not. There's the community gardens and lots of um, beautiful plants in the front there. Um, the surface itself is uh, stone dust. And I can tell you that this late fall, I was out in Gloucester and there was seniors um, from all over. They were having a tournament um, that were playing. And so it was cold and windy. It was right on the ocean, which I wouldn't complain about myself, but um, <laughs> There was people from all all over um, the North Shore who were there competing. So um, I don't I don't know, uh, Ginny. Maybe you can answer. Would you play in the winter? I don't know. You know, like um, so there's glow in the, the dark balls too. I heard <laughs> so they could play at night. <laughs> the 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 SketchUp it did look like it was a fully covered thing, so it wasn't it wouldn't be like it was going to be filling up with snow or anything. Yeah. No, that was. Um, Joe, I forget his last name. He had submitted that as a as an idea, but our costs do not include that because that would be way more expensive. That could be a okay. future, um, you know, a covering. Gotcha. So the, 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 this is for just for the, the boxes and, and creating the courts, but not yep. not the covering and, or and the, the parking. The, the courts, courts, the parking, the access, ADA access, and such. Benches. Yep. Yep. So you should have right. also. Um, received in the packet i'll just close it up you guys should have oh god how do oh. i get it so it's not <laughs> fuzzy on, I might be able to <laughs> did you that. get this as well they weren't as yeah. blurry as that but yeah sorry. <laughs> i don't know how to where to hold it hold on i can i have it up i can share it on my okay screen. good that's what we submitted you with oh. the application oh, gotcha if you, if you scan um or slide up a little yeah, you can see like with the benches around it and stuff, that's 
how we envision it. And the opening is so that somebody in a wheelchair there could get in. Um, and then uh, honestly, surprisingly enough in our research, um, like when you go bowling and if you're in um, a wheelchair, they have this like little thing that you put your ball on and it rolls down into the lane. They actually have that with some of the um, Special Olympics uh, for bocce. I was um, surprised to see, so. Uh, I just, just to follow up, I'd, I'd be interested in seeing a little bit more uh, support from the community for getting something like this uh, in place. Well, you have two letters of support. I know a third one was to come, but I ran out of time with all the other applications I was helping with. Um, and that's why you have public meetings. So when you have a public meeting, that's when they need to come out and, and show that there's a demand and they want you guys to support it. And I will add that we're, we, uh, Donna made a draft of a, a public feedback form that will finalize at some point and people will be able to offer comments that way and on all the projects. And then we will be having a public hearing um, before we vote on projects as well. Jenny, I think, did you want to add something? I did. I wanted to answer um, Christy's question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I've, yes, I, and I, I had a constituent that said to me today, go bocce. He's a senior and he came from New York where it's a big sport and people do that. People, people play all year long, as long as it's good. They do that with the pickleball too. Mm -hmm. I'll be silent till, that, till the next thing comes up. <laughs> um, I had, oh yeah, go ahead, Misty. Um, this is on the same issue. Um, I started playing pickleball about six or seven years ago when people laughed at the name. Mm -hmm. And the only courts were up in the Y and I happened to be working out up in the Y. So if, if, even if there aren't a lot of people now, if there are bocce ball courts or whatever you call those alleys, um, there's no telling who they will attract. So I think that's a really important thing to remember. So if it's there, they'll come. <laughs> that should happen with pickleball. Mm -hmm. I know um, that movie, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess two other comments that uh, Stuart had on this project. Um, one was that, um, in spending the money, you know, if if the CPA funds were allocated and you had the capital funds, um, he said the capital funds would need to be spent first and then the CPA funds. So that way we're not supplanting the capital funds in case it ends up fully funded and there's capital funds left over. Um, so that was one comment he had. And then also, um, I know it already says it in the application, but just wanted to reiterate that CPA funds can't be used for like the equipment, like the balls and things like that. Um, but it, it already says that in the application, but just wanted to clarify. Everyone brings their own. It was amazing. Oh. I actually played when I was in Gloucester. Um, the seniors encouraged me to play. I was terrible. <laughs> let me tell you, they were laughing at me, but um, it was fun. They didn't want me to leave, but I was ready to have vacation. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, go ahead, Dave. I, I'm beginning to develop this question on, uh, this is a, uh, a growing situation with me. As we begin to research and analyze and review these, uh, these projects, I'm beginning and knowing that we're not gonna be able to cover uh, a lot of them. I'm just wondering if there are ways to assess this in a manner that says we could build some of it now and then maybe some of it later? Are there ways to fractionalize this or break these projects up so that uh, we, we, and I'm not, I'm not suggesting we're gonna do this, but, but maybe in a, a strategy or an approach would be to, be, to do some of them uh, or partially uh, and then kind of put the remainder for, out for next year or the following year. Does that make, make any sense at all? Well, I think that's exactly where I am with this. So we only got half the funding and here I am stuck trying to figure out who and where I can get the rest of the funding, you know? So yeah. um, I think it happens already, just we, not with CPC money. Um, 
there was, you know, I have capital requests in, it's going to make its way through city council, just like all of these. Um, and then again, with recreation, as you guys have heard me say before, like we're up against police, fire, DPW. Um, so this is an avenue for us to get recreational facility money um, to improve um, and build upon it in, in our community, the facilities that the public has requested like pickleball courts and bocce courts. Right. I mean, some of these are my ideas, but they're, they're, they come from our community members and that's the best part. Um, so I had a question about, so this one already, like you said, already received partial funding, um, the capital funding. Um, does that money have like an expiration? Like, do you have to use that within a certain number of years? <laughs> um, well, they like me to spend it um, right away, but with COVID um, and then um, honestly the skate park project, everything kind of got put on hold because that had a really late start and a quick timeline. Um, so yeah, no, we have to start spending some of it. That's why, like I said, the fountains, we've gotten the quotes on the fountains, um, which we can buy them, but like the paving and that kind of stuff and um, the concrete work, you get a better price when you do it all at once. And then you don't have multiple different contractors doing the work and pointing fingers at each other if it doesn't match up correctly or one is better quality than the other, you know, like that kind of stuff. So um, it's nice to have all the money at once, bid the project, be done, and have ribbon cuttings. That's my favorite part. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think we're probably looking forward to ribbon cuttings with CPA funds too. <laughs> Our first ones. Well, I have the scissors, so let me know. <laughs> um, any other questions or comments about this project specifically? Doesn't look like it. All right. Um, Pardon me. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but uh, go for it. a lot of detail uh, that's not here. Uh, because that's probably not yet known, but I, I keep wanting like a site plan and elevations and uh, materials and uh, and that's probably coming down the, the road at some point in time, but I'm just wondering the extent to which you have that in your head, Christy, uh, you know, the, the details of this. And is that something that uh, we need to be looking at later as we, as we go down the, the road here? Mm. Well, Travis, if you pop back up that um, that graphic, it did have the site plan. Um, it's just a basic um, design. And then um, like this is once we get the money, like that's when we work with DPW and um, a designer to lay out all the parking spots and that kind of stuff. Um, and I mean, I've met with DPW that these numbers came from DPW. These numbers came from my research for other communities who have built um these kind of courts um i have you know the cost from other projects as far as can you slide down or up a little travis so on the left there and the yeah right there yep um is how the parking will be the um with the handicap access there where the hashtags are yep and then the the white around that is the, the sidewalk and we have benches. And then um, the blue is where the, the courts themselves will be. And Beacon is, um, yes, thank you, Travis. I was like, I don't know if that's, which way that is. <laughs> But when we bid stuff, Dave, that's where all that stuff, you know, will will come together. Okay, I'm just I don't know whether we will be getting involved in that kind of detail or not. I'm still trying to figure out what our job is here. To... <laughs> no, I mean we we're not Mike. We're not micromanaging it. We're seeing if it's if it's legal within our yeah. within our purview, and then saying like. Yeah, I mean, we're we're not involved in the bid project and like, oh, you know, make sure the the walls of that are at least eight inches high. I don't I don't want it to only be six inches high, right? right? That's not that's not part of our stuff. Yeah, and so, 
obviously you have to follow procurement law, Dave, and then I have all the different designs. Like I have designs from colleagues in Arizona, um, the um, Bocce Association, like I have an entire folder of all these different kinds of designs and um, the best way to build it. That's There's a lot of research that goes into coming up with these budgets. I'm sure you're, I'm sure you're doing your job well. <laughs> and then I just pray that the costs don't go really high. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that, that was going to be my next question before we moved on was, you know, if this money is allocated and then it ends up costing more than the CPA plus capital funding that you have, then what, what's the plan at, at that point? So that's with the, with the bidding process, that's where we may need to have the bid alternate that we build one court and have the alternate for the second court if the, you know, if, if we're looking at a tight budget. But that's why when we request money, like we do our due diligence with research to give you guys a number and capital city council, everybody, a number that's realistic. No, Paula. Okay, great. Okay, any other? Dave, you got another question? Oh, I'm, I'm good for now. <laughs> Thank you. But I may. <laughs> yeah. No, I know how I know how you feel about the plans and stuff. Like coming from conservation commission, I'm like, you know, used to looking at these engineering drawings and stuff. But with the planning board, we have a elaborate site plan sometimes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That just goes on forever, and uh, <laughs> and I'm just wondering whether we're paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> me too me too thank, thank goodness we don't have to we don't have to get that detailed yeah i guess the main thing is that we just have to make sure that it seems feasible you know i think feasibility is our main thing like if if someone asks for five thousand dollars and they're going to build 10 bocce courts we'd probably think that's not feasible because <laughs> right know. Okay, but everything's okay. Matt, can I say something oh, on, sure. that, on this? That I do believe that I know Mar uh, Marlo frequently gets involved also, um, and, and he works with Christy, and, and when they give us, he gives figures. There's a little bit of a contingency in there, but they're, they're accurate. You know, they're mm -hmm. accurate with a contingency so that there's usually enough to I, pay I for it. I just wanted to say that. Yeah, and I, and I guess um, the other thing to add is that um, I believe that if the, if the full amount of the CPA funds that were allocated were not used, then it would come back into the CPA funds. Right. Right. Um, so if, if only 70,000 was used, then 10,000 would come back. I would just like to say that um, I know I wasn't um, designated to be timekeeper, but right now we are yeah. halfway through our meeting and we have other things yeah. besides yeah. these I, next I two projects on the agenda. Yeah. So Christy's laughing. She knows this is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And she's my chair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So uh, the next project is the Shattuck Fitness Cluster. Um, $24,000 CPA funds requested. Um, okay. Anyone, anyone have any questions or comments to start out on that one? I will say, I don't think, uh, I don't think Stuart had any, anything to say about that one. Great. <laughs> okay. okay. It's a, it's a city, it's official city park. Oh, Rick, okay. Rick oh, controls it. Okay. Thanks. And it's I think he was just it's permanent equipment. Yeah, I think he was just, you know, making sure that it was equipment that would be like permanently installed. Um, which I'm sorry, I had was. I had an emergency phone call I had to take. Um, we're on number three now. We're on we just three. we just started it. Yeah. Okay. No, just no one's asked any questions yet. Okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Good enough. Okay. Um, all all I said was that Stuart didn't have any questions or issues that he saw with this one, other than just making sure that. The equipment was like permanently affixed to the ground. Um, yeah, Dave. It looks like an intriguing piece of equipment. Uh, I'm not sure how dangerous it is, but uh, I just wanted, Christy, if you, if you could describe it just a little bit more. How many people can use this at one time, for example? 
Sure. If you zoom in on the bottom, Travis. Oh, let's see. Maybe. Usually it says on the bottom lower. It's a little blurry. I guess, on yeah, because it's scanned in. So, um, I, Dave, I don't have an exact number with me, but it's a um, multi-sided unit, as you can see. Um, and um, I, I guess I can get specifics on what everything is, but there's like push-up bars, there's sit-up, um, incline stuff. It's all, it's, it's called a fitness cluster. And um, if, as you saw on the layout below, like originally, again, not to go back to the high school project, but um, our old playground had to be taken down so that the contractor could have their um, trailers for um, the construction meetings and whatnot happen there. And then um, we have the whole layout um, on the bottom part that's not in that red bubble put in, but, um, for some reason, they didn't put in the full amount. Um, I think that was probably um, just a political thing about funding. And so we have the space, we have um, the wood chips. It's just a matter of getting this piece to, to put in there. And nowadays, in, in um, this time, like families like to all be together. Years ago in the 80s, they would have these fitness trails where you would go from at the time they were wooden, like a wooden structure to do sit-ups and then a wooden structure to do uh, chin-ups. And now families like to be all together so that the kid can be swinging and the mom or dad can be doing a little fitness um, exercise themselves. So I don't know if that really answers your question. Yeah, uh, and I'm still wondering about, at one point, I think your narrative referred to like the, the, the High school team could work out on this, or there was some allusion to that. Uh, and I'm just trying to imagine a team uh, working out on this together. I can only see, uh, I, I haven't seen it up, the actual piece of equipment up close, so I don't know how many people can actually use it at one time and, and uh, get a benefit from it. So. Oh, yeah. Well, as a team, usually as a team, you have like um, stations. So this would be right. a station that you would have somebody might be doing wind sprints on the track and then someone's over here doing push ups and sit ups and they rotate through. Um, and then the letters, I believe you got a letter in here from. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, Lisa Moore and Mike Kaczewski, um, who were in support of this just for the PE classes. Right. Um, because they have. Um, fitness equipment inside the, uh, the the new high school but they don't have anything outside um so i can get you an answer as to how many can fit on there i don't have that i guess in front of me yeah it it, it looks like about five. Oh um, no it's more than that more because it's um, two-sided um, yeah but you got you have like the this sit-up zone you have the pull-up zone you have two two other pads and then the the thing on the left there at the at the you know maybe there's maybe there's two different pull up zones so so five or six it's pretty it's pretty pretty significant right if you know even if you have twelve or fifteen people on your on your team as as you as you noted it's often a station kind of thing like someone like you know and this is part of the fitness cluster there's there's three other pieces in the whole cluster that are already installed right. right. Um, and it looks like Susan's got a question too. Yeah, I, this this is another one of those. If this is going to be used by the high school, why is there not any commitment from the recreation department at the high school financially to make this happen? Um, it's a public park, Susan. So, I mean, they'll, they'll have access to it, you know? Um, uh, and if I can just com comment back to Garth, Garth, the other pieces of equipment there are um, are not fitness clusters. They're, they're swings, there's a slide, there's a teeter-totter, and actually a school bus. So those are all different ages um, of equipment, and this is more focused on the, the teens and the adult. Oh, gotcha. Thanks. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yeah, the, 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 the narrative mentions teens, not mm -hmm. specifically teams. 
Yeah. Um, and that, you know, because kids are there, if they're hanging around, it, you know, maybe they'll be like, hey, we'll hang around and play basketball or we'll hang around and we'll we'll do a, you know, we'll get together and, and do, a, do a circuit versus a, you know, a, a dedicated PE kind of thing. Looks like Wistie has a question. Yeah, so this is like, if I were out walking down the sidewalk, I would see this, mm -hmm. right? And, and that I could just go and jump on it and use it. Uh, one of the things, I, I love the fact that it's year round. Um, yeah, and that even in the winter, all year, people could be using it. Um, yeah. So where are the sidewalks? Um, I don't <laughs> And I don't have the sidewalks in there, but it's so everybody knows where the high school is and the rink. It's mm -hmm. right next to the rink. So there's a sidewalk right in front of this uh, playground and the parking lot is adjacent to the brand new basketball courts that's there. Um, and the basketball courts um, are actually they were funded, Susan, through the high school project. So there's a recreation asset that was funded through the high school project. But this is actually in Shattuck Park. It's a deeded park. Yeah, I, I actually know where it is that you're where you're talking about. And I've been there with someone who was had a child in a, in a, um, in a um, in a stroller. And it was in terms of access, it was an easy access to get from the sidewalks to this area. It was not it was not a big deal. So uh, I'm a, which part of the park is it? Is it um, Federal Street yeah. side? Nope, it's up by the uh, um, Collins Moylan Arena. There, yep, okay. it's right Definitely. in that area. Yeah. Yeah. It's okay. under those under those trees. Yeah, yeah, in the shade. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, that was um, just to add. That was another thing. Uh, Stuart had overall. This is to everyone on the committee. Is that in our applications going forward? we should ask people to specify exactly where these projects are happening, like an address, parcel number, you know, site plan, that sort of thing. Um, Cause we, we actually didn't have that in, in our application. So something to think about for next year. All right, any, any other questions on this one before we move on? Okay. So the next one was um, called Site Amenity. Um, and this one sounds like uh, amenities, concrete chest, ping pong tables, foosball, cornhole boards um, in public spaces. Um, I'll, just, I'll just start off with, uh, this was the one that Stuart was saying that he thought it might not actually be allowable um, for CPA unless these are being put in on dedicated parkland. He said it kind of sounds like it's for like streetscapes and streetscapes are not allowed at all. Um, but if they were going on like dedicated park property, then they would be allowed. So I don't know if you could talk about it. And I think it would be helpful if they are going to be on parkland to maybe get like a map showing where these things might be. So I don't know, Christy, if you could talk about that. Sure. This is the same conversation we had at the pre-app. Um, so it was made clear to me that this can't go at like Court Square because that is um, um, not a deeded parkland. So um, the application indicates that they will be on park. So for instance, at the swim area, at Beacon Field next to the bocce courts, um, we envision putting some of the cornhole boards. Um, the new Fisk Ave um, pocket park that we're in charge of, um, we've talked to the mayor's office about putting stuff there. Green River swimming area, we want to have stuff. Um, and then the middle school um, as well, because the school, um, is available to the public outside of school hours. And then during school time, um, the middle school kids don't have um, a lot of recess time to begin with, and then they don't have anything really to do. We have a small playground over there and a ball field. Um, this age group really needs a social interactive things to do. So this would be where foosball, ping pong, um, possibly chess would be. Um, and I just think it's a great opportunity um, to help the, the school kids. 
The other thing um, that is included, I don't know if you want to put up the graphic, um, is additional bike pump and, and charging stations. Um, so our first bike pump um, and repair station was at Fisk Ave Pocket Park. Um, we want to put another one, depending on funding, at the swimming area because the bike trail ends down there, as well as um, we've talked about at Beacon over by the playground. Um, the solar charging stations on the bottom. I'm happy to say that this um, we're putting one of these in the skate park. Um, and I'd like to put these as well um, in our parks. We've talked about, again, either Beacon, definitely at the Energy Park, possibly Fisk Ave, um, Pocket Park. And what those are is a um, completely solar charging unit for cell phones and electronics. Um, citywide, we have a lot of um, damage to our outdoor electrical boxes because uh, everybody wants to charge their cell phones. And um, this will be an opportunity for people to do that free of charge and hopefully um, without damaging any of our other outdoor um, outlets. So hopefully that answers your questions, Travis. Yeah, yeah. I guess, I guess my only continuing concern would be potentially the ones at the school if, if we, it seems that school property is not you know, not under the direction of the Parks Department and maybe therefore not allowable, but it could be that, you know, it, we could partially fund it excluding that if we felt that that wasn't allowable, I guess. So I think I'm gonna have to get a, a legal answer on that because um, the schools maintain everything inside and the city maintains everything outside. So mm -hmm. all the ball fields, all the playground, any sort of site amenity, um, the city side maintains in Parks and Rec. Okay. Did anyone else have any further questions? Uh, yeah, Susan. Again, this is the partial fun funding question that we're probably gonna be asking everybody. If um, you got some of the money, but not all of the money, do you have priorities for what you would do first or anything like that? Um, I think, Susan, it will depend on what, what the funding amount is. Obviously mm -hmm. the concrete pieces um, cost a lot more with freight to get here. So it'll really depend on, on the dollar amount. Um, but obviously we would buy as much as we could. Um, and if the schools end up being still questionable, then obviously that would be something that had to be funded elsewhere, you know? So we would easily take take those pieces away. Um, the river, the energy park, um, and Fisk Ave um, and Beacon are the real popular areas for community members. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, anyone else have any other questions on this project? I'm just double checking uh, some notes here. Yeah. Travis, if I can add one thing, because I remember at the pre-app meeting too, um, you guys had questions about them being permanently installed and they mm -hmm. would be, um, certainly the concrete um, things will be attached to a concrete pad. Like, I don't know if anybody has seen the chessboard that's at the top of Fiscav. That's the same unit mm -hmm. that we would be purchasing, same company. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I yeah, I think it was just really drilled into us that we can't uh, use any money for equipment that you know, soccer balls and nets and mm -hmm. you know things that can be moved and taken off site. So. Okay, if no one has any other questions, I think uh, we'll move on to other parts of our agenda. So thanks, uh, Christy and Jenny for being here. And um, we'll, like I said, we'll try to put all the recreation ones in one in one meeting to you know get through them as efficiently as possible for you. Thank you. Um, yeah, I know there's two dates in January on my calendar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, great. <laughs> All right, thank you.
So the um, next item on our agenda is press release for applications. Um, I think we were first going to discuss the Donna's draft of a public feedback form um, because that was something we wanted to mention in a press release. So um, Donna, I don't know if you want to Sure. talk about that or I, I don't know if you can share or maybe I should share uh, if you, you make can. me a co-host I can share it or you I mean if you have it in your email then you can share it too yeah, I'm gonna pull that up No, I can't share. Give me one second here. Okay. Well, while you're doing that, um, let me just tell you my thought process with this. Um, and my assumption was that we were going to release this um, once we have like made public all of the applications. Um, and I did uh, set it up with uh, the idea that people could, would say which, you know, I assume that not everyone was going to want to comment on every single um, application or project. So what I wanted to do was capture whether or not, you know, people are saying, I want to comment on this or I don't want to comment on this. And I'm not sure um, if that's necessary, but I did set that up. Um, like the idea being that every page, and I set it up in sections, so you can go to one and you can say, no, I don't want to comment, and you can move on to the next section. And if you do choose to comment, um, yeah, Travis, you are probably going to have to, yeah, fill it in. Um, I think, yeah, okay. So, and I also was trying to set them up um, so that I gave a brief overview of the project, and I also um, talked about this was the cost of the total project, this was the CPA funding request, and then having a link back to uh, see the whole project. Um, and as I said before, I have, I would like to comment yes or no. Um, I think that might be helpful just in terms of, then we can see who commented on what, and, and we know, okay, we had 50 comments on this one. We had 100 comments on this one. And I think that that can kind of help our numbers. Again, that was just sort of an idea. I'm not sure how real it is. Um, and then I just came up with like three questions of like, you know, is it valuable Greenfield? Is it valuable to me? Is it a good use of funding? And additional comments. So that, that was just what I threw out there to get things started. So. I guess I would like to hear from people about, you know, what, what do you want to know from people? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, one question I had was, when you say I would like to comment on this proposal, does that do something different in the form? Um, no, so if you say no, then you can just go to next. Oh, it would just you, be, a, yeah. If you don't answer it, you can't, you can't go next. Right. I see, yeah. So, you know, and again, I'm not, I'm not, I don't do this, like make Google forms for my living. So, yeah. but, um, but I just thought that that way, at least everybody would have to like go to each page. And if they don't want to comment, then it's a quick no, and they can move on. And I would really, you know, I'd love to hear feedback about that. We can choose to take that out altogether. Um, yeah. Susan? I think, uh, go ahead, Susan. Um, I, I really think that this is, that, that this is actually a good basic way to go. Um, it doesn't, unless people really have something that they want to say about something, then they've got the opportunity in the comments section to say something specifically that they're either supporting because of something or they're, they're not supporting it. Um, if, but in general, I think most folks just kind of, kind of, this is what it's about. Okay, 
got an idea? Do I think this is a good use? Do I think, you know, I think those questions are good questions because they're, you know, because if you want to get into more details, that opportunity is there. But if not, it it just, you know, this is a basic this is a basic yes or no. Yes, I think this is good. No, I don't think so. this is good. Because uh, I don't know how much, you know, um, you know, the the ad, ad, the additional comments allows for, for that, you know, more specific things that people want without having people ask a, answer 100 questions, which I think would be problematic. And the other thing that I did was coming up with a scale because when we actually like pull out the data, we'll be able to see like in graphs and charts, like how many people thought it was really good or just somewhat good, you know? Mm -hmm. Okay, I see Garth has his hand up, so I'll stop. Yeah, go ahead, Garth. Um, yeah, I guess my my one thing is that I, I think in general, the, the layout and having sort of like a, a quick scale and then a comment thing, um, you know, as, as Susan mentioned, is, is a great idea. Um, my big concern is basically this is a, you know, 15 or 16 page survey. Um, and it, it may be that we want to force everyone to, to get through there, but I'm guessing people are going to have, you know, comments about a few of the projects um, and right it, it it makes it so there's I don't know I think if someone goes in there and they're like oh well, you know I got nothing to say about the CSO stuff like yes they can hit no but if they're like I really want to say something about the beacon project because I want to do bocce and they have to get through 13 of the the other projects of saying like, no, next, no, next, no, next. Um, I don't know, I, I, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna lose them. Um, okay, so here's, you know, and, and I thought about that too. And I think another way to handle it would be to have um, like check boxes on the, on the very main page. It says, I wanna comment on, and then we list them all. And then I could like, if they choose one of those, then they can say next and be bumped right to that page. But if they want to comment on more than one, then I guess they have to like have something that brings them back to that list, you know, or maybe it's like comment on more projects and it actually brings them back to the home page. Because um, right. you certainly can't do, I know it's not possible to do like, I want to comment on A, C, F, and G, like all at once and then have it like magically do that for you. Right. Um, it's kind of like could 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 each could each cycle be you know it's it's either a checkbox or a pull down saying like I'm you know so you go to like the comment page and it's like I want to comment on and you pull down and it's like I'm gonna comment on the CSO one and you submit that and then it's you know back to beginning and then you yeah. pull down like oh I also want to comment on the Beacon Park thing. And then you you do that, or you know, or not, right? So you, you sort of go through as many iterations as you want to. Yeah, I know. Versus, versus having to select, like, pre-select everything, or I think that that would be the only other way to do it. Um, and then, I mean, I don't know that the whole having the yes no on commenting really matters so much. It was just a way for me to like sort of give people a quick way through. Um, mm -hmm. But I well, think I was, that I was going to say you could just get rid of the yes or no, and then they could just keep clicking next, you know, yeah. like until well, they get the one they want to comment on. It it is it is. I mean, yeah, it's really it's it's not that many nexts all together, but it might um, work better to have like the whole list on the on the main page, um, and then it'll be like they can choose that and they can get bumped to that page. All of the pages will look the same. Um, and then it's like when they're done commenting, they can go back and they can, you know, it's like we, maybe there'd be some sort of like submit or comment on another one or something like that. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that that, that I, I could do that. Well, yeah, go ahead. I, I really like this and, and I hear what you're saying. And all the things, you know, like um, that Garth was saying about it really being long, all that is a danger, but um, 
you know, like I, I'm thinking about what you created here and, and I really like it. Um, like, here's what I hope. I hope that maybe we can ask, you know, different organizations and even housing units or whatever, you know, if they would even have meetings and kind of go through this and get more feedback because otherwise we get the same old people commenting on this, you know, I, I just think it's really a good, a good thing to get people's feedback. And, and I, I wish there were some way that we could use this then to reach out to people who don't usually go on the city website to see when there are meetings, who don't usually attend these kind of things. Um, anyway, I, I think you've done a good job on this and, and it's right that it's laborious. But otherwise, you know, we, we might get 200 tennis players or, you know, who right. haven't looked at all the other things. Right, I mean, it's like, we wanna get as much feedback as possible, but we also don't wanna make everybody comment on everything. That's right. But we also wanna be able to scale, you know, like, well, only five people commented on this, but all five of them, you know, gave very good feedback, whereas 30 people commented on this and, you know, 10 of them gave no way and 10 of them gave absolutely and 10 of them were neutral, you know, like, it's one of those things, it's, it's, it's kind of like the process that we're going through and it's, it's kind of like you create a rubric and you think, okay, this is going to work really well. And then you're, you're grading papers and it's like, oh man, this is a C paper, but it's hit all the things on the rubric and it really is like a B plus, you know? Um, and I think it's just, you know, sort of, I think we have to go through it. The other um, piece that I wanted to hear back about was the, the sort of the way that the, the way that it's presented up at the top. Like, is everybody good with like me just creating a sort of, summary, linking to the application, talking about how much money. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the, with the see the full application um, yeah. link, I think it makes perfect sense to do that because then, then if someone's got a question, they can go to the full application. Okay. I, I think the summary yeah. is just a gift that you're giving. I think that's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I wonder if maybe the summary, like maybe this part, I don't, I don't know how much of this you wrote or you just pulled it out of the- I pulled it out. I pulled out um, sex segments to try and like give an overview. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, probably the, I was gonna say the most fair thing would probably be to just pull out wording from the actual application, Yeah, you know, instead of us, potentially accidentally editorializing and <laughs> putting our right. own feelings into it. Right. Well, I definitely did that. Although it's like, that might be like the beginning of a paragraph and the end of the paragraph with some stuff that's like, you know, just yeah. felt extraneous um, out of it. So. I think, I think that's fine. Right. Okay. I, there are just so many things I like about this, e even given the drawbacks, you know, but I would hope that in the newspaper and on radio stations and, you know, wherever we could, if we could ask people to look at this and, and give us feedback, I, just to see what we get. Well, and that's, we're hoping to send out a press release and, you know, talk about the projects that uh, the applications that we have and then let people know that this exists and they can give us feedback this way in addition to our upcoming public hearing in the spring. But if we, you know, like a press release, that would pretty much go to the newspaper, right? Or where else would it go? Yeah, it would It would go to the newspaper. Um, those, uh, you know, there it's a pretty small percentage of people who read the newspaper. And yeah. it, boy, it, you know, like, it, it would be great if if they had a meeting at Oak Courts and you know and help people kind of look at this. It would be great if if um you know PTOs or whatever you call them now the the parent teacher things you know just to have all kinds of people in the community 
really be encouraged to look at this and give feedback. It'd be neat if people who would belong to the food co-op mm -hmm. were told that it was there and please go and look and give feedback. Um, well, that our, could, yeah. I, I was going to say that could be uh, a job one or more of us takes on is to try to spread this to as many organizations and, you know, contact contact people and organizations and say, hey, will you please share this with your members or, you know, that I think that kind of falls on us to try to get them to do that, you know. Yeah. Right, the cl classic share with your networks. Yeah. Right. We, we, we can't like force people to give us well, feedback, but you try to get it out there and hope, hope a reasonable number of folks and a wide wide range of folks respond um the other question that i had was regarding um the people who are responding like i know uh, um public hearings public meetings when you um when you get up to speak it's like what's your name and where do you live i mean and mm -hmm. so that's why i went with uh, what's your name and where do you live um because we also we need to sort of identify that so we know that we don't have like somebody you know quirky mccorky like making 50 answers here to try to stack the deck um but uh does that seem Although appropriate? They, can, they can still do that well then they there's have no, to have a no different name yeah and that's the question do they are they supposed to live in greenfield well technically the the um the cpa funds can be used for like regional things that would improve like the region as well as greenfield itself um so i, I don't think they would necessarily have to be in greenfield but i mean if it's like someone from worcester like that might <laughs> that might be a little less relevant right do we want to say have a, like a checkbox are you a greenfield resident yes no hmm. I mean, I think if we have address on there, like, I don't know. I think people will probably tell us either, you know, a street address that's in Greenfield or they'll tell us that they don't live in Greenfield. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably fine not to okay. just because I wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to restrict it. I wouldn't want people to think, oh, I'm not, I don't live in Greenfield and they want me to affirm that I do you know, and then not take the, you know, like if they, if they live in Turner's Falls, but they use Greenfield Parks all the time, like we still want that feedback too, so. Okay. Um, Susan? Yeah, just on that, um, the dog park, there are folks from New Hampshire who come to the dog park. There are uh, certainly folks from, uh, from Deerfield and from other towns. It's, it's really well used, not just by Greenfield residents. And I think that could be an example of, of, why this it might be fine to have someone someone who wants to do bocce who there's no other bocce court and and really wants to do it and and they live in you know shelburne falls or wherever okay all right so i will we'll leave it at that i mean i'm already seeing that because i copied and pasted a lot of stuff from pdfs the hard returns are kind of mm. screwy mm -hmm. um so i can clean those up and I can also, um, instead of doing the, you have to go to each page and say yes, no, I can take that piece out of there and just put in, you know, below are all of the projects by clicking on one and saying next and up. I mean, I have to figure it out because I know I've done something like that before, but to just like bring them to that page and then bring them back. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I, I was. Go ahead, Wistie. I would still like to encourage people who are willing, not that they have to go to next, the next, the next, but if there's any way to kind of encourage people, you know, to, to say, because I might not want to play bocce, but I still might give it positive things. But if you gave me a choice about going to look, I might not choose to. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that's that's the um, that's the other thing. Like, if they don't know what it is and they're just going for their own thing and they go. To their own page. I mean, we might we might we might want to have more feedback, and potentially making people say next is 
a way to do that. And they might, it might encourage them to move forward. Yeah, and you know, it's kind of like the ADA issue, you know, so, you know, all, like, I don't have ADA issues, but I ought to be concerned. But if you gave me a choice about whether or not I was going to go look at that, I might not. I, yeah. Is there, is there, do you know if there's a way to add, like, you are on page two of 15 or whatever? I think yeah. I just put it in the top, like, okay, yeah, yeah it's just be text, yeah. I think that maybe that would help because i mean the way it is now you're like you don't know how many you're That's unless you true. know how many projects there are you're just going to be like oh my gosh it just <laughs> yeah. keeps going and going yeah yeah because yeah. i suppose you know it really isn't it, it isn't super time consuming to um yeah and should there be a list of the projects on the home page hmm. I, I think the list makes a lot of sense and just say if you want to do more than one hit um, hit back to the beginning if, if that's what it what the, that button is but hit the bot back to the beginning button for a second or a third or whatever for another for another uh, pro project and that okay. way you know that way if you don't want to do go through 15 pages you don't have to but if you want to do three or four that makes that makes it feel comfortable I think okay so how about this I mean I, I don't think that we should release this until all of the um, all of the proposals are made public. So we have some time, right? Because they're sort of being rolled out. They're, as we, they're all public, right? They're, they're all on. public now. Yeah, Every, everything's on. up on the on the website. Okay, because the last I knew it was just the ones that we had reviewed last time. Okay. Yeah. Um, because the other thing that I can do is I could put in the, the checklist thing and people can play around with it and decide whether they want to, you know, change it or leave it as it is. So it'd sort of be like a it would be a both going on for a little while and you guys could review it. Would it I mean, we're not gonna meet again and we're gonna meet again in January. So I think I could, yeah. you know, pull something else together just based on the feedback that I've gotten tonight. Um, and at least knowing that, that everybody's good with the, the formatting of like the introduction of the proposals, that, you know, that takes time too. So I could, I could chip away at stuff and maybe um, we could revisit this next time. Yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like maybe we should, yeah, maybe like look at it again in January, finalize it, and then press release at that time. Um, okay. Because we'll also need to know like, Christian will have to share it on the website, and then we'll have to have that link for the press release. And, right. You know, and I don't know I, if I don't you saw Christy's yet. chat. Um, oh, no. Uh, she was talking about how it will be um, going on the website and social media for the city, um, as well as I'm sure yeah. the rec department, the rec department's really good about um, being in touch with their constituents. So, yeah, and I'm sure the city of Greenfield will share it on okay. their Facebook pages and things like that. Yeah. And, and I, I would like to, um, and I would put some effort into thinking about wh where else we could encourage people like the food co-op or, you know, yeah like the churches i don't know well we could probably generate a qr code from this i mean i'm not like a google forms whiz but i would imagine that there's a way to generate a qr code yeah. so that um we could this is really tough for just like go to google dot docs dot slash dot form dot mm -hmm. one two three hcy blah 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 well we can um, make a, a tiny url too yeah right, right. Yep. You know, it, 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 in a way, we would be advertising our committee and the work of our committee and, you know, what this whole group is doing. And I think that's important because th there's nothing like this in the city. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so it is 657. If no one has anything else um, oh. on this, um, we do have a public comment period on the agenda. So public comment, two minutes for um per speaker so if anyone has any public comments they want to share at this time okay no public comments at the public comment period so the next item on the agenda is our next meeting january 12 2023 
5.30 p.m. at City Hall meeting room. Um, yeah. Um, just so everybody knows, if you tune in to WHMP tomorrow at 4.06 p.m., you'll hear me being interviewed about Community Preservation Act. Um, I was invited to, to uh, they said they wanted to talk to someone for about 30 minutes about uh, the process is what they said, Community Preservation Act process. So I need That's to do great. a little research and make sure I know what I'm talking about. But You'll do great. Yeah. Awesome. Be a celebrity. Yeah. yeah. Will you get a link to that? Hopefully. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it'll be on the it'll be on the radio live at 4:06 p.m. And then right. after that, I'm not sure where it'll be, but I'll okay. I'll try to find it and I'll send it out. If yeah, if because I, I think that you, you should be able to get a link and then we can listen to it um, later if we're not available. Yeah, yeah they basically they upload it as like a podcast afterward. Okay. And then you can oh, all correct me on. Back. Uh, he's back. Uh, he's back. <laughs> Then you can all correct me on all the things that I might have gotten slightly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Christian, I'll, um, I'll try we, to write. Oh, do, ahead, do we know ahead. which which ones we're going to review? For, um, right, I, don't, have... I don't think we've picked that out yet. Um, I know Christy said oh, that she had the uh, next meeting on her agenda. Um, six. I think I think it'll come down to who maybe can make it, like which of the applicants can make it. Um, Christian was. Right, we have we have the, we have the historical stuff. We have the Highland yeah. stuff. We have the bike route, and we have the pickleball. So yeah. those may may cluster as historical one. You know all the others, or or differently. Yeah, I was yeah. talking with Christy about it, and ideally, because the um, Phil Elmer's project is actually sponsored by DPW, not Christy, so it would mm -hmm. be Phil, the two historic in one meeting, and then the four other recreations, ideally, just to make it simpler for you guys and for Christy, um, but obviously, it depends on who can attend when, so. Cool. Okay. Right. Well, it was sure helpful that you guys went and talked to Stuart. Yeah. Mm. Thank, he he came to us. He he came oh. to us and he said that in in the committee's first year, they come to the committee and like basically go through all the projects and give you an idea of the you, you know due diligence is what he said. So mm -hmm. we have some more input on on all the projects. So once we get to those, we can bring that up, and then the ones we've already reviewed, we can talk about those uh, in the future. Well, that was amazingly helpful. Yes, yeah. I agree. Very. Mm -hmm. good. They're a good organization to be a part of. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, gl I'm glad we're using money to be a part of that organization. <laughs> All right. Uh, it's 7.01. Would anyone like to make a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> All right. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Aye. All right. Well, that is unanimous. So we are adjourned at 7.02 p.m. December 15th. Thanks, everybody. All right. Thanks. Thanks.